Thank you very much, everybody, for being here and sharing with us this uh, amazing symposium of reproduction. As uh, Mark has introduced, my name is Nicolás Guerra. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, the business part of reproduction range in SIVA. That means that uh, I take care a little bit about what, uh, what is the impact of the hormones on farm and how we can get value by using hormones, okay? And today, I want, I want you to present an outstanding example about what is an increase, what is an example of improvement of productivity on farm by using a hormone. In this case, it's going to be Altrenoyes uh, with our product Altresin. I'm going to show you an example in a farm in Denmark, okay? Uh, as we will see in the, in the presentation, Denmark is a country with a, a top standard production in swine uh, with, uh, you will see, outstanding numbers. And even starting from a base, uh, a starting point with a very high production level, we were able to increase the productivity by using the product. And just as the last uh, remark uh, as an introduction, how did we do this? Very simple. We start to synchronize gills with altresin every week. Just by synchronizing the gills every week with altresin, you will see the results that we obtain it, okay? So, let me present you what is the current uh, situation of uh, production in, in Europe. Here it is. The most common production uh, standards in Europe is the weekly uh, batch management. This means that every week, we introduce uh, gills and sows, we inseminate, we uh, farrow, etc. Okay? The second point is that the health status in most of the countries we can say is medium high. Of course, we are affected by uh, disease like PRS, but in general terms we can say that the health status is optimum. Another important point for us is the, uh, the, the breeds that we are using in general as well. I don't want to say any company, but in general is based on hybrids, based on your side and Landras. What does it mean? It means that they are very high prolific breeds with a high number of uh, leaf born, total born per sow, okay? Another important point is that the gestation in sow, the, uh, the sows are loose in the gestation pens. Since the diagnosis of the pregnancy until the farrowing uh, moment, all the sows are loose during gestation, okay? The number of lactation days by law has to be four weeks. In this case, the example that I'm going to show you, we, are, we reached 30 days for lactation, okay? And the winning age, the minimum that we try to do is 28 days. But as you will see, this is variable. Sometimes we will have to win at 21, 25, 28, depending on the needs of the farm. As I say, it's possible to win piglets at 20, 21 days. Oh, I did something wrong. What about the production results? Let me show you, these are the, the average uh, numbers for, uh, for, for Denmark, okay? As I said, it's a top high uh, producing uh, uh, industry. You can see the, okay, so here you can see the number of farms uh, that we present in this study. This part is the average of the farms, and here we have the 25% best and the 25% lowest, okay? Just in advance, I tell you that the farm that we are going to uh, see today is between the 25% of, uh, of uh, performance, okay? Best performance. The liters per year, they are producing around 2.26, which is best 231, 28 in the, the lowest. But look at all this, look at this. Leaf born, they are producing 15 piglets. 15 piglets per sow, per liter, with dead born 1.7. They are uh, winning around 13.1. The best one are able to, to win 14 piglets per sow. This means that per year, they are winning 29.6 piglets, okay? The best farms are actually winning 32.2 piglets per sow. 
Finally, as I say, the age at winning is 31-30. Remember that by law in Europe is uh, 28 days of, uh, of lactation. And finally, we see that the mortality after winning, it reached 2.9 around 3%, okay? So, to start my presentation, I want to explain you an important concept on farm, which is the flow, the capacity of the farm. And this is something that sometimes we need to understand because, for example, in many times we are always talking about how many piglets do we produce by per sow, for example. Yes, it's a, it's a good number, but as well, we need to think how many piglets we can produce with the facilities, with the flow that we have on farm. And I give you an example. One of the important facilities that we have on farm is the farrowing cage. And this is part of the flow because every week the sows are entering into the farrowing cage. They are farrowing, they are having lactation three weeks, four weeks, and they are going out. And these farrowing cages are always the same number. Okay? So I put you here the next point. Why don't we start to think how many piglets do we produce per farrowing cage? per year. This is another concept to you to start to think, okay? And it's based on this, flow and capacity. Depending on how do we manage the flow of the animals around the facilities of the farm, we are going to perform better or worse, okay? We will see now. The first point, fast management it's about how do we utilize the facilities on farm. This means how are we going to manage to occupy every week, every three weeks, every day, all the, all the facilities of the farm, starting from the farrowing, uh, farrowing uh, unit with the farrowing cage, the nursery pens, the gestation stalls, everything. This is key for the performance of the farm. Second point. As I say, many pigs per sow do not necessarily mean the best use of the facility available on the farm. Sometimes we need to think, are we overusing the facilities or the rest? Are we using less than we could do the facilities? It's an important concept that, again, I'd led you to start to think about it. Many sows are either not synonymous with a good use of the facility, and we will see now. Maybe if I have too much sauce to farrow one week, maybe uh, I'm going to overuse the farrowing unit or I'm going to be obliged to farrow, to win sauce just to let a space to another uh, sauce that are going to farrow. That, that is the concept that I want you to, to explain you. Uh, the way we are going to occupy our farrowing unit, we will produce better or worse. So the first limiting fa uh, factor for how many pigs we are able to sell, as I said for us, we are going to consider is the farrowing unit, okay? Based on the farrowing unit, we will see how the flow of our, of our farm goes. This is an example. In the farm that I'm talking about in, in Denmark, they had batches every week, okay? So, look. Every week, they had 53 sows entering to farrow in the farrowing unit. At the same time, because this breed is very prolific, with uh, 15 piglets born alive, remember, they use 10 nursing sows to help to milk all the piglets per week. So at the end, this farm has 63 crates, farrowing crates, okay? This farm has a five farrowing sections. This means that every, in every day is occupied five units. So that means that in total, the farm is going to have 300, sorry, 314 crates, okay? You have the number? So the example that I want to show you here is that in this farm, before starting to synchronize the heats of the gills, the farm depends completely on the uh, natural heat of the gills for every week. So they were deciding 
around how many animals they could introduce every week in the farrowing unit. What was the result? This is. Sometimes, some weeks, we had 72 sows entering, another week 51, another week 50, another 68, 68. So some, some weeks, the farrowing unit needed more crates than its capacity. Remember, it's 314. What is the impact on this when we had more sows than uh, available crates? Very important one. We are obliged to win sows from this week and means that we are going to win piglets with de less days than the average. Remember that we, are, we want to win pigs, piglets with 28 days. When we have over, over stocking of a uh, farrowing unit, we are obliged to win animals before, earlier, and this is going to be this is going to have a direct impact on, on my production. On the contrary, another weeks, for example here, we are occupying 307 crates. We have seven crates empty on the farm. Do we know what is the impact, the economical impact of an empty, empty crate, farrowing crate? It's a lot. We can say could be 400 euros, can be even 1,000 euros, depending on the prices, depending on many things. But what we can tell you is that having an empty crate on farm is something that we cannot afford by far. And this is the current situation in this farm, which was the normal situation in all the farms in Denmark, before synchronizing guilds. Why? Because the variability of the numbers. As I say, sometimes 50, sometimes we can see here. This is the variability. Look, here we say we have the number of weeks every week, and here we have the matings and the farrowings. Can you see from 40 matings to 71 a variability of almost 30 animals every week? That was the standard production of this farm until 2012. Okay? And why do I say until 2012? Because in 2012, end of 2012, we started to uh, introduce a protocol with altresin, synchronizing gills, okay? But let me explain you what was the impact of this. It was a punishment with an equal flow. What does it mean? It means that they had a low nursing rate, utilization rate. What does it mean, low, uh, nursing utilization rate? It means the capacity that we uh, have for every farrowing crate to use it with a nursing sow, okay? The maximum, let's say, the optimum uh, nursing uh, utilization rate will be 100%. We will show you now how to, how to calculate this. Second point, up to 20, 25% of the piglets, because some weeks we were overstocking, were win below 21 days of age. What does it mean, this? It means that they need more time to reach sales weight. Why? Because the piglet is smaller. At the end, the, the, the growth rate is not going to be the same if we win this animal at 21 days or if we win this animal at 28, 30 days. Another important point, a small pigs need a better feed staff, more expensive. This is another cost that we are going to uh, increase by uh, winning the animals younger. What else? We need more heat. If the animals are younger, if the animals are smaller, they are going to need more heat. This is another uh, point to take in account. And finally, we can have more diarrhea outbreaks. We can have more respiratory outbreaks. We are mixing different ages, animals with uh, uh, early winning, 20 days, with animals with uh, late winning, 28, 38, okay? So if we have more outbreaks, we can have as well more medication cost. We have to medicate these animals more. Okay, so as I said, in 2012, we decide to start 
a synchronization program on the farm using Altrenoyes. This synchronization program obliges us to calculate and plan the flow of the farm. And here I want to show you how do we calculate the flow of the farm. We represent the different units that we need to take into account. We have the farrowing unit, which is the pivotal unit, as I said, uh, for the production of the flow of the farm. We have the winner's unit, the gills unit, and the mating unit. So in this farm, what we were uh, looking at was, OK, if I have to plan how many gills I want to introduce every week, and I want to have every week the same number of gills, what I must look at? I'm producing 840 piglets per batch per week. Out of these, out of these uh, 840 uh, animals, when I pass them to the winner's unit, I'm going to select 20 animals to become gills. Why I'm going to select 20 animals to become, weak, uh, to become gills? Because I'm going to need 14 gills. OK? And why do I'm going to need 14 gills? Because, remember, the farm is matting 59 sows per week. Out of these 59, we want to have 14 gills. And the rest, 45, are going to be sows. By synchronizing with Altresin, I am able to fix these numbers every week. This means that I'm not going to uh, vary, I'm not going to change the number of sows or the gills depending on the week. No, no, no. Every every week, I want to follow these numbers. Okay. This means that I'm going to synchronize. 15 gills per week, with the objective to introduce 14. This 14 comes with 45 sows winnet. To have 59 sows and gills mated per week. My objective here is at the end to have 56 farrowings. OK? And at the same time, remember, I will have every week 10 sows as nursing sows, okay? They are going to help me to uh, lactate the piglets. So, what do I need, or what do we have into consideration when we are going to plan, or when we are going to synchronize the batches every week? From one side, we need to know the number of matings. That means we need to know how many sows do I want to introduce every week, how many winnet sows I'm going to introduce in every batch, and the second part, how many gills I want to introduce always the same number in the batch. Considering this, of course, we need to take care of the reproduction part. This means what is my fertility rate? What is the mortality and the infections that can be affected in the nursery? With these two parameters, I can establish a plan of synchronization on the farm. And now I'm going to show you what is the impact of this. So. We decided to make a, a program for the gills, to introduce the gills, that was as follows. During the weeks 26, 27, 28, and 29, we introduced into a pen, we, we can name it a gill development uh, unit, uh, where the animals were basically there to check the first estrus. Okay? The main action during these weeks was to check if the animals were cycling. Every animal that was cycling, it was marked or colored with an spray just to know that this animal had the first the first estrus. Sometimes when the animal reached the 29 weeks and still they didn't express estrus, we introduced the boar into the pen to stimulate the estrus of these late uh, gills. But our objective always was to have animals cycling not later than 29 weeks. After 29 weeks, all the animals that expresses the estrus were introduced into another pen where we started to synchronize with altresin. Okay? I will show you now how, how do we do the, the system. We choose one specific day of the week to select the gills, to get these animals, and to start the treatment with uh, the gills. This represents three weeks of, week of, uh, of treatment. 
Okay, and then finally, after the three weeks of treatment, the last ten weeks, we gave them a flushing uh, program just to uh, enhance and improve the uh, ovulation rate of the animals. So, with 33 weeks, we were able to have every, every week a fixed number of gills entering into the farm. But not only that, another important point, we were able to control the age at first service for all the gills. This means that we try to mate gills with no more than three estrus, between two or three estrus. How did we do that? As I explained, let me show you. We had a, this is a pen, we named it the gill development uh, unit, where during, in this pen, the only thing that we uh, were doing is to check if the animals express the first estrus. One, the animals express the first estrus, were moved to the cycling gill pen, okay? And every Thursday, we took the number of animals, in this case, remember, were 14 gills per batch. We took 14 gills and we introduced in the altresin pens. This means that we started the treatment following this, this program. Look, the week one, we took the animals, we introduced the animals into the altresin pens, and we started to give them an oral treatment, but with apple juice, something sweet, Coca-Cola, orange juice. We did this once per day during four days. Why? Just to get used the animals to be comfortable with the, with the approach of the gun, giving them the dose, and let them be confident, okay? After this, we started the treatment during week two of altresin. Remember, altresin requires 18 days of treatment. So that means that during three weeks, we, we were treating the animal once per day in the morning until Thursday of the week four. In Thursday, we withdraw the treatment and we know that when we withdraw the, the treatment with altrenoyes, after five, seven days, the animals express heat. So that means that these animals were introduced to this weekly uh, batch with the winnet sauce and we inseminated Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, okay? That was the protocol that we decided to use in this farm. This is a, a photo, how do we dose the, very easy to dose the, the treatment, is one per one, one dose, we will see now. So, just to let you know, what were, what were the rules of altresin that we implemented in this farm? And I want to uh, emphasize on this, we have very good results by using altresin, but it's very important. We need to follow the following rules. Otherwise, we can fail on the treatment. And the rules are, first, the animals that we are going to treat with altresin should be cycling. That means that at least they should have one estrus, okay? Second, we have to give the treatment 18 days once per day during 18 days. What happens if we uh, lose one day or we lose more than one day without the treatment? There is a big risk to have ovary cyst. So that's why we really mean we need to give during all the 18 days one dose per animal. The third rule is the dose has to be 5 ml. It's important as well if we dose or we underdose the animals, giving three, four mLs, we, are, we put at risk as well the animals to suffer ovary cyst. It's important. The fourth rule is that the treatment should be at the same time every day. We emphasize on this uh, as well. If we are giving the treatment during the morning, okay, let's stick on this uh, program and every morning, more or less the same time, let's treat the animals. And finally, during these 18 days, we have to avoid the boar contact, okay? Why? Because we don't want to stress the animals. We want them to be calm, not stresses. These are the rules for altresin, and these are the rules that we put in the program of this farm, okay? 
So let me present you the results, the first results that we obtained with the uh, altruism program in the farm. I think graphically it's very clear. Here from the left is the farm without using altruism, without synchronizing the farm, the animals, okay, the gills. You can see it was 2012, and the variability is uh, quite significant. Remember, we had a variability sometimes 70 farrowings, 40 farrowings, 60 farrowings, 41. Okay, once we started to use altresin, the flow got more homogeneous, more equal. Okay, this is the first impact of this program. Now we are going to see what happened after this. First, the variability of uh, mating's farrowings decrease. Remember that in the slide that I present you before, in 2012, we had a variability, for example, of even 30 animals, 70 animals uh, mated one, one week, 40 animals mated another week, 65. In this case, the variability is no more than 10, 62, 54, even, for example, 59, 56. You see, we were able to reduce the variability of uh, inseminations, matings, and farrowings. As well, very important, because we were able to reduce this variability, we were able to increase the tendency of number of piglets produced per week. This is the number of piglets every week winnet. Can you see the tendency, the positive tendency? Of course, here as well we have not complete homogeneity, but more reduced. And what we found is that we started to produce with the same number of farrowing crates, more piglets per farrowing crate, comparing before without using altresin, okay? And this is very important because when we are going to make numbers, the final outcome of the farm is incredibly higher. Another important point, I mentioned it before. In these in this, uh, Danish farms, they have a parameter, they name it nursing period utilization rate. This, this, uh, this rate measures you the capacity of every crate to be used to lactate an animal, okay? And it's a percentage. In this case, it's calculated with the nursing period of days plus four days of the preparation, clean the, the crate, uh, disinfection, whatever. So we multiply this by the number of farrowings per year. And this number is divided by the number of farrowings spent times 365 days of, uh, which is one year, and multiply per 10. This percentage, as I say, is going to give us an idea what is the, uh, the capacity or how are we using the, the nursing crate with the piglets, okay? So, what we saw is that, look, in, two, in 2012, when we didn't use altresing at all, the farm wins per year were 2,078. Nursing period, was 28.1 days on average. And the nursing period utilization rate was 76%. This, this crate was used about 76% of its capacity. After the implementation of the synchronization of gills with altresin, very interesting. In our analysis, we discovered that our farrowings per year had increased 169 farrowings with the same number of crates. This is important, eh? With the same number of crates in the farrowing unit, we increased 169 farrowings. At the same time, with the same number of crates, we were able to increase 1.1 days of lactation on average by using the nursing sows, the gills, and the farrowing sows. If we increase 1.1 1. 1. Uh, the, uh, the lactation days, this has a direct, import, uh, direct impact on the weight of the piglets. 
if they are eating one day more of, mil uh, of milk, you can imagine that the growth is higher, okay? And finally, the nursing period utilization rate was improved by 7%. What does it mean this in terms of numbers? In terms of numbers, it means that this farm with the same number of uh, farrowing crates were producing 1,950 piglets more than before, and they produce extra 21,000 kilograms of weight of piglets with the same number of piglets we need. Why? As I said, because we were able to improve the, the number of lactation days. And always with the same number of farrowing crates, okay? Another important uh, point that we, we, we discover, we reduce the number of empty farrowing places. This is in very, very important on a farm, on the floor of a farm. We cannot have, we cannot afford by ourselves to have empty farrowing cases. Never. It's a big loss for the, for the, for the um, farm. In this case, by synchronizing, we were able to fulfill every week all the farrowing crates. Another important point, by implementing this program, in one way we oblige the farmer to improve or sorry, improve the work routine, the work routines and management on farm. Okay? The workers they have to be more uh, uh, keen on the on the facilities, they have to attend even more the animals. So best man at the job, better management, at the end, better results. We were able to focus, to gather all the inseminations in two, three days maximum. In this case, in the farm was Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. During these three days, every week, we had all the inseminations, which is another important point for the farm because you know when you are going to need your semen doses, so you know you can plan, you can get the best seminal doses, everything on time in a proper way, okay? Another important point, as I said, we were able to increase the number of piglets per liter. Why? One of the reasons as well is, is it was that we knew the expected time of breeding. So uh, we put a flushing program at the same time with the treatment of altresin. Remember, during the 18 days that we were treating uh, with altresin, the gills, the last 10 days of the treatment, we implemented a flushing program for the gills. Always, the gills that we inseminate, they had between two or three estrus. Not less than two, not more than three. Okay, this is very important as well because uh, we knew that the optimal moment of insemination, the first age at insemination for this kind of breed was between 220, 240 uh, days of age. And that was with this status, second or third estrus in the animal. And four, as I, yes, age at first breeding influence. Because we were focusing the age at first service on the gills at the second or third, uh, third uh, estrus, we were able to improve the pig's soft life performance. What does it mean? We were able to improve the average of piglets produced per sow during all her life. Okay? And finally, as I mentioned before, we were able to increase the average of lactation days during the lactation period. With all these elements, we can explain why we were able to increase the number of piglets per liter in this farm just introducing this uh, synchronization program.
this is uh, just a commenting that uh, we put some people as well into the into the farrowing units to take care of the farrowings because we knew that 60% of the 80% of the batches gave birth during the 60 hours so we were able to uh, focus on the farrowing uh, moment of the of the south trying to uh, reduce stillbirths allowing the animals to have even the weaker piglets calostrum this is very important because we were able to uh, to improve 0.4 piglets per sow uh, in the farrowing crate just uh, performing this management um, finally as I said, we were able to give a constant and uniform flow on the farm. What does it mean? It means that the piglets are entering, they are winnet at the same time every week. More or less they have the same age, between 28 and 30 days of age, every batch. So the flow is consistent. The animals, the batches, enter with the same weight every week into the, into the nursery unit. And this, as we have explained it, has a positive impact on the final production, final outcome of the farm. We increased the utilization of the winnet unit, unit, the nursery unit. We abode the overstocking of these units, as we said uh, uh, at the beginning, remember, before uh, using altresin, some weeks we had overstocking of sows, we had to win a lot of piglets, another uh, week we, we had less piglets, it was a kind of variability in the in the number of animals. With this system, every week we have the same number. This had a final uh, impact on the health status, less respiratory outbreaks, less diarrhea outbreaks. And this final uh, uh, slide is just to show you what is the current situation. That was in 2012, this is the number of uh, farrowings. And this is the number of winnet animals. After, with altresin, you can see the homogeneity. We are always in this range. So in summary, just to conclude, what we have done by introducing this uh, synchronization program in gills is to get uniform batches. Every week, we have the same number of animals entering into the farrowing unit, same number of animals entering into the nursery period. Second point, because we are able to plan the number of animals that we are going to mate, that we are going to farrow, we were able to be homogeneous in terms of numbers and increase the number of lactation days. In this case, the nursing period. Due to all these things, we were able to increase the number of piglets per liter. We had less variation in the age and the size of the winnings, winnet piglets. Okay? All the animals were winnet around 28, 30 days, every batch. And finally, we were able to define the flow of production of the farm. And this, as I said, help us to plan, to schedule every action on the farm always in advance. So everything is prepared, everything is calculated before it's going to happen, okay? So in conclusion, what we want to tell you is that altresin is a very valuable tool if you respect the rules. But if you respect the rules, the right tool is the half of the job. With this presentation, what we wanted to show you is how we can enhance, how we can improve the productivity of a farm just by using in the right way an appropriate hormone. I encourage you to think about this, to implement it in your farms, and in case you were, uh, you were interested and you want to discuss, I encourage you to contact our people in every of your countries, discuss with our colleagues from SIVA, and I'm sure they, they can uh, discuss with you what, uh, what was the experience, what, what you can do in your, in your farm, how you can uh, prepare this kind of program. But as you see, there are a lot of things 
positive things to gain by applying a right program. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure to